Hey guys, in this tutorial uh, we'll make some uh, tractor tires and uh, first I'm gonna define the pattern I'm gonna use some curves to do that so we'll go from here to here and then from here to I think there, something like that let's see, okay So I'm holding D and C and middle dragging along the curve to move the pivot and then I can scale down like this. Okay, that's good. So I'm gonna group it, duplicate it and put negative one in X and then move it down like that. And I can see that this is not exactly what I want with my pattern. I want this to match the curvature here. So I'm gonna just delete this move this up like that move this down I want to have a parallel line here like that delete this okay now I'm gonna drop this curve back inside this group I'm gonna duplicate the group and put a one in here move it up now it's parallel that's good so now if we test this pattern out, so this will be our tractor tire pattern. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's make some uh, polygons. So I'm going to make just a plane, drop the subdivisions to nothing, and snap some vertices like that. then add a couple divisions like this just using insert edge loop tool so this is just temporary because we need to select the outside loop and then extrude I'm going to do an offset so I'm holding control then left clicking on the offset name here and extruding and I want to go between here and and this edge like just in the middle there that's going to be our divider in between like that and this will snap here so I'm holding V selecting the arrow and then middle dragging like that to snap and now I'm going to um, add another loop here for a bevel and here but I want this to be evenly distributed so I'm going to scale this edge until all of the uh, these three edges are the same size like this and then I'm going to add a bevel here and then just scale this down to the middle like this or not scale just move it so I'm, I'm selecting the vertex here holding C and then middle dragging on this edge and that's going to make it stick and I'm just going to bring this in bring this out like that all right so now I need to freeze the transformations, reset them, and clear history. So let's modify, freeze, reset, and then shift alt D to clear history. Now I can duplicate this, put a negative one in X, and move this up. And to match this, what you can do is I'm gonna hold D and V, snap the pivot here. Then I'm gonna hold C and middle drag along this edge all the way to the left here, and that's gonna place it there. And now what we need to do is we need to match, let's hide the grid, turn the wireframe on. We need to match these vertices and these edge loops. So that means I need to change some of these edge loops around. So I'm going to use uh, insert edge loop tool, set it to relative distance, autocomplete on and with edge flow. I'm going to drop an edge here, one there, one there and one here and then delete the extra ones like that and I'm going to put an edge from here to here it's not going to work exactly right so let's go from there actually let's do it from here and to the middle I'm holding shift and this like that so what I want to do is I want to split the difference here like this I want to have an even distribution throughout. 
it's going to give us a nicer result. So I'm just moving it, holding C, middle dragging, snapping, just eyeball the rest. Like that. You can get closer to this if you want. I'm just kind of not being super careful with it. Okay, delete this one. And we need an, a loop here. There's too much deviation here from the rest. Okay. So now I'm going to freeze transformations, clear history. So for freezing transformation and resetting transformations, I made my own hotkeys. Um, this helps me because uh, I have to do this all the time. So uh, where's the hockey editor? You open it up. And there's just uh, some hockeys that I set. And it's under menu items, modify, and that's center pivot, control shift C, freeze transformations, control shift F, and reset transformations, control shift R. Like that. All right. So now freeze, reset, clear history, duplicate, put negative one here we can snap a vertex there move this up uh, let's see let's see how we're matching here so I'm gonna put it here and then snap to that and now on this one we're just gonna snap to these vertices like that all right so now these are matching but this one this edge here is not matched so we delete that one and again we have to freeze reset duplicate negative one and now we can uh, move the pivot here and then snap it there like that so I can combine now merge vertices clear history and then I can duplicate this move it down if I place the pivot here I can just snap it there so you can see now everything is matching I can combine that merge you can see that's working now the only thing is we need to fill this area so to do this, I'm going to use a pen to polygon like this. And then in here, just fill hole like that. And then I'm going to select these vertices like this. I'm going to add a lattice to this. I want to spread this out a little bit. So I'm going to move this up. Okay, it's going to work nicely. I'm going to do the same on this side. Just like that. Put a lattice on this and select this lattice point and this one just move them up until I like the fall off here there okay delete this edge and now we need to figure out how to close all of this off let's see Sometimes you see stuff as you're doing this and uh, makes a little more sense. Okay, I like that better. That will work out fine. All right, so now we need just this much. That's all we need. I'm going to duplicate. Flip it negative one and move it up here. Okay, so we can see we need to adjust this. Okay. Alright, so that means this one's no good. So again. <coughs> we have to do this a couple times to get it perfect. This is the one we need to adjust. Get rid of this. Negative one. There. Okay. Now that works. 
So let's duplicate. I'm gonna move the pivot here and snap there. So you can see we need to adjust. We just need to make one more adjustment and that's here. I think this will be the last one. I hope. Negative one there. And we're trying to make a tileable pattern here. Okay, now that's perfect. All right, that's enough. So I'm going to combine this. Merge. Clear history. We don't need these curves anymore. All right, and now I'm going to select these faces here. Shift greater than. That will uh, increase the size. And then I'm going to move it up like that. And if we press 3, you can see the pattern that we get. And you can see what we're trying what we're trying to do is make sure that this is all nice and smooth in between. And I think it's working. Okay, now I'm going to go from the front view here. I'm going to select these vertices here and add a lattice. Select these vertices here and add a lattice as well. And when I'm adding lattices, I just want to show you the settings that I use. Double click the lattice. Uh, sorry, we need to open the options for lattice. It's under the form lattice. And I'm going to set 2, 2, 2. 30, 30, 30, and hit apply. And then the same down here. And once you do it once, you can just press G to redo it again. And now I'm going to select the subdivisions here. Which ones do we need? Yeah, we need those. So I'm going to select the S division, select both lattices, click S divisions, middle drag in the viewport, add some uh, lattice points. I'm going to hit F8. This will take me into lattice, into component mode, and then just un unclick and click the, this vertex here. Uh, and that's going to give us lattice points. And then I'm going to select the sides here. Select this, scale this in, scale this out. I'm going to bring this down, make a nice round pattern here. Maybe scale this out a little bit. And then move the top down as well because the top's going to be also curved, but not as much. It's a different curvature there. And then clear history. And you can see what we end up with. Like that. I'm going to pick one of these sides here because what I want to do is I want to um, add uh, some extrusion here. I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to use a pen to polygon. I'm going to go from here to here. And then I'm going to use insert edge loop tool. Set this to equal. Turn off uh, insert with edge flow. I'm going to just add an edge here. Trying to match that as much as I can. Like that. Select these vertices here. Click merge. And if you hit 3 for preview. If you're not getting, the, if this is hard like this, just increase the merge threshold until it merges. Like that. That's good. And now I'm going to insert an edge loop like this to add a nice sharp bevel there. Like that. I'm going to then select these faces here. So, so you can select this face, shift greater than. This will grow your selection. And then I'm going to scale this like that. Scale it down. And then I want to hold D and C uh, while still in the scale tool and middle drag along this bottom edge here. This will then let me scale down towards this edge and create like a, a, a thicker edge on the outside there. Like that. All right, that's good enough. And then I'm going to click extrude again. So you can just press G. And. Uh, then I'm going to just cl uh, click the lattice without doing anything else because now once I have the lattice selected I can right click go to lattice points and then select these uh, vertices, these lattice points here bring this out and then bring this in just a little bit you can see right here what I'm trying to do with this edge 
So from here, it's going to look like that. I'm going to select these lattice points on the bottom, scale them in like that, and leave this the, the way it is. Then select it, clear history. We can soften edge just to see what we're trying to do here. It looks like that. I'm going to then uh, go into my insert edge loop tool. I'm going to set this to relative. I want to put an edge loop here and here, and then one in the middle here, like that. That should be enough to give us a nice sharp bevel. Let's get rid of the grid. So you can see what we tried to make here. That looks great. Now, these vertices are very close together, so I'm going to scale this so that the distance here is even. So, like, divide into thirds. Same with this. And then this one. Just like that. Okay. Now, from the top view, we're just going to, again, select only this section that's tileable. Because it has uh, this piece. Shift select the rest. Delete. And then I'm going to duplicate. Put a negative one in X, move this down, move the pivot here, and then snap it there. So if we combine, merge, should get that. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to select these edges on the sides here. And then I'm going to extrude down to create the edge of the tire, the lip. Get rid of this grid. Okay, like that. So I'm going to first make this little, uh, the part that goes inside the rim. Good enough. All right, and now let's add a couple divisions here. So I'm going to use Insert Edge Loop tool, set it to Multi, and add three should be good. And if you need a guide, we can make a curve from here to here. Bring this out and then adjust the shape that we want so something like like this would be good i think so now if we select our vertices here i can just scale until i reach that curve like that i think bring this down a little bit and i want to add a sharp edge on this side as well. So I'm going to do that. Like that. Alright, that's good. Now, I also want to delete this section again. So I'm going to delete this. Because what I want, also want to do is even out the spacing here. It's not uh, exactly how I want it. So there's an easy way for me to do it. The way I like to do it is I'll just make a, a plane, give it no divisions like this. Oh, let's get rid of this curve. Get rid of this grid. All right, so I'm gonna snap it all over there. And then here you can see one, two, three. So we need three edge loops. So I'm going to set this to 3 and just do this. And then I can select these vertices here. Hold V and middle drag. Snap them there. Now it's evenly spaced out. And if I want, I can also just adjust these a little bit. Like that. Okay. 
Get rid of this. All right, so this is perfect. Freeze, reset, duplicate, put negative one in X. Snap it there. And then combine, merge. I'm gonna move the pivot here and then duplicate. And let's see, let's snap it here. And then we can do Shift D and just keep duplicating. I want to make it pretty long. I don't know how long I want this, uh, how big the wheel I want to be. So I'm going to make it long and then uh, we can always bring it down, reduce the size. So combine, merge, like that. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's uh, center pivot. I'm going to open up, uh, bring back the grid here. And I want to put the pivot at the top here. So I'm holding DV, clicking the green arrow, and just dragging all the way up as far as it can snap, like that. I'm going to put it here, just counter rotate like that. So 180. Then freeze, reset. And there's our tire. Now, uh, I'm going to add a bend deformer. So I'm going to go to deform, nonlinear bend, rotate it like this, so put 90 in here. In the inputs, go to bend, and then increase the curvature so it's going in the wrong direction. You just need to rotate the bend deformer this way, put 90 in there. So you can see what's going to happen is it's going to. Um, if I increase the curvature, it's going to just make it, uh, it's going to go to 180, and that's it. So, but what we can do now is we can scale the tire, the actual wheel, until we like the size and how many of these divisions we want. Like that. Now, to help with this, we can also make a cylinder, and that's going to be really helpful. So, let's see. Uh, also, if I group this and then center the group, this will give us the center point of this of the wheel. So let me just actually do this. I want to scale this down so that the edges here don't go past the sides of the wheel. Then I'm going to center uh, the pivot on the group that I make. I'm going to put the bend form in the group as well. Then I'm going to put that at the center of the grid, like that. That way I can make a cylinder right in the middle. We can rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to scale this out until it meets, just meets the tire there. And then I can give it some divisions, something that makes sense. Like if I do 64, let's turn the wireframe on. Um, why this is helpful is that if we get our tire to match a cylinder like this, it's going to be easier to close it up and connect and also just to figure out its size. So now I can scale this. And what I can do is I can scale it until I meet the size there. Also, you can scale the wheel in this direction and Y. And that will scale the thickness of it. So we can also change that as well. So if you want to change, if you don't want the wheel to be, the tire to be as deep, you can do that as well. So you can see we have to get pretty this is gonna get pretty small I feel like if we get if we do a 64 so maybe we should try 64 plus 16 that's 80 let's try 80 Oops. Also, see, this is not lined up, so you can move it left and right, like this, and then scale. I'm going to move the pivot just like there, and then I can scale from there. Alright, that looks actually really good. 
And what I'm doing now is I want to try and scale it. I'm going to zoom in real close. I'm going to scale it until these two edges close up. Let's see up here. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to make the rim a little smaller. Okay. Hide this for now. All right, so now we need to actually uh, delete a section. And to do this, okay, so it's going to be much easier to clean this up if we just delete a section here and then re-rotate the wheel and reconnect. So let's see if I delete this, oops. Okay, that should do it. Oh, forgot a piece. All right, now because we placed it on the center of the grid, I can just uh, hold D and X, move the pivot there. We can freeze transformations. I can duplicate. And if I rotate, let's see if we did this right. Oops. Okay, so we did a little too much. And that's an easy fix. we did this if I put negative 144 it matches exactly go figure all right I can now select these combine merge vertices test to make sure it's connected and that's it now we are we have our little uh, tractor tire Looks pretty good, nice and smooth, no lumps. Got nice sharp um, detail here. And let's look at the wireframe again. And it's pretty light, which is good. Usually when you do tires, they, be, they get pretty heavy. So uh, playing it out early enough, you know, like doing the, all of the curves and the all of this uh, trying to connect things I think saves us on the our poly count and you get a nice low poly count tire while still keeping lots of detail all right I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, subscribe and like and uh, stay tuned for more I'm planning to do a car next I laid out the curves already so I'll uh, I'm working on the video for it right now so stay tuned and uh, see you soon